Okay, so I wanted to do a quick video on how I start the very beginning of new sports or new leagues. This is something that I found to be better than about six, nine months ago with the new Opus 4.1 model. Now, obviously, Sonnet 4 is great for everyday use, basically what they say here. This one is actually a lot better, but the usage and the costs, you'll just burn through quickly. It's easy to spend $100, $150 in tokens or credit costs if you're using Opus 4.1, whereas if you're using Sonnet, you'll get 95% of the way there, but it'll cost you 10% of the price. So if you're on a budget, just roll with this. If not, this is still the best for this kind of section. You start with the goal. So we're looking to build a sports bank prediction model. This is the terminology that I've found works the best. So they have the logic, but also they have the prediction element in there based on the sport of, and then you would just put your sport in here. So it helps if you put the league as well. Say I wanted to do, let's just use basketball for this example, but specifically the NCAA. So we'll see how they approach this. Now, usually the sports that I do, if you follow this channel, they're the kind of mid-range sports that we're not going for something as widespread as basketball, but we'll see how this goes. I didn't want just a service level model logic, looking for a very deep dive analytical approach on how to judge the quality of players, teams, matchups. Each part needs to be broken down granularly so we can then acquire the data for our edge creation hypothesis to come up with individual player team matchups. So basically we can build it from the ground up trend type stuff that is going to be quite tough to do or at least you never know if it's real or not so it helps to have ratings so then if the market changes in the future you'll know your edge is gone or greater or whatever to do this we need to acquire a lot of very granular play by play level data from the matches and then make sure there's enough data around historic odds as well because you're going to be back testing you need to make sure that you have historic data you can back test against for example if you're doing a really new sport like esports back in 2020, pre-COVID. I can't imagine there's a lot of good historic odds data, especially with high limits and liquidity. So you can pretty much sack off backtesting that. And then to start, could you research the best and most effective way to do this? Concisely coming back with the best options and data sources and how you were going to do that. So basically, are we going to scrape it? Are we going to buy it, etc.? And then building out the entire plan and structure that we need to proceed moving forward because we're just going to copy this into the next step as well. This should be free or cheap and publicly available. Please use creativity, innovation and initiative with some ideas that may work, but not being talked about or mentioned. The reason why we do that is just because we want them to not just have a surface level look and be like, okay, well, here's what's good for NCAA B. You need to scrape all the data from basketball reference and build out player ratings based on <clears throat> prior stats and all this, everything that's kind of normal. If you're technical, you can just put anything in here, but it doesn't really matter. Let's just say two years. I like to do, especially for college basketball, because there's so many games, there's no point in you going 10 years back. If you have a sport like the NFL, then sure, but not really relevant anymore. Let's just say point spread. And for example, you can obviously target less efficient markets within major markets. So for example, player props in NBA or NFL is probably a good way to go if you like those major sports, but you can't beat baseball money lines or NFL totals. I would say that approach is probably what I would do if I was starting up again, just because there's a lot more edge to be had and the limits are increasing massively with all the SGBs and yeah, just like the same game parlay stuff that is player based and player props based has been increasing liquidity massively. If you haven't used a research of any of these AI tools, these take quite a while. So I'm going to pause this. It's probably going to take 10, 15 minutes and then we'll see how we go. Some sports, to be honest, when it comes back, are just trash. They either just don't really understand it, but that's why we've tweaked this original prompt and added a few extra bits like this line here, just to get a starting point. We're not looking for AI to build the entire model, give us all the edges, and when we run it, get a 10% ROI on the first try. Otherwise, everyone would do that. There's still going to be a lot of manual calibration and theory creation because everything starts with an edge idea, like, you know, <clears throat> For example, it's something as simple as home advantage, right? In your specific sport. There's sports that we bet that don't really have massive home advantages and it's still baked into the line even today. So if you know sports and specifically leagues within those sports, like for example, don't want to give too much away, but let's say baseball in the UK. Yeah, obviously 
pretty minor minor sport if you've built a baseball model that works with japan or korea or anything it doesn't need to be the us that's probably going to be every other baseball league in the world so you can then put that in and win off those but if i have specific information asymmetry based on where i live for example i know who's injured or who's not going to be playing all your model calibrations and estimates mean nothing you just make sure that you go into that information asymmetry route as well so I'll let this run for a second, and once it's done, we'll come back in. Alrighty, so that took about half an hour. It includes detailed collection from the API and premium sources. And there's some code in here as well. Unconventional edge opportunities like referee tendency analysis, travel fatigue. The result of the report provides production ready Kelly right here. Okay, so let's see if they've got anything interesting. This is the kind of doc that they build out for you. This is pretty long actually. So we'll run, we'll try and run through it in like five minutes. So they're saying that the actual core website's API using the new open source. Okay, so interesting. So if that's true, that's a great data source. This is obviously like day one. If you've been doing this for weeks or months or years, you'll probably know this already. But because I've never bet basketball properly, this is a good piece of data straight off the bat. Five requests per second. Okay. And then they've given you the code to access that, which is cool. Another one. Advanced analytics. They got bar topic. Interesting. One thing that I would do if I was going to bet NCAA properly is approach it from a different angle. I would build my own model based on other people's models and just wait to them properly. So everybody's model like Ken Palm or Bar Tovrek or there's loads and you can even find individual people. As long as they approach it a slightly different way, when you get all those inputs, if you have like five or six sharp inputs, although most of them are gonna be pretty close to the market line, if you weight them correctly, and more importantly in certain situations. So if one person is really strong at <clears throat> one approach to modeling and another person uses a different approach maybe like a, i don't know one is like a core cool stats guy you've got one like pen and pencil guy you've got one like local quote-unquote beat report guy that can be pretty good okay so you can see we've got ken palm here as well provides the most accessible okay interesting so bet labs is actually not a bad product at least it didn't used to be so Ken Palm again, which is some cool product. This is some cool research, right? So then they always talk about the ethical frameworks for web scraping. So this is actually pretty good, to be honest. You could start with this and see where you go. Sentiment is something I tried to look at because it's really good in financial markets, but in sports, it doesn't really seem to be a thing, at least in the sports I've looked at, just because sentiment is basically baked in unless you have a really, really one-sided, you know, like a Mayweather McGregor type event where the social or the quote unquote public money can skew the actual line. Otherwise the lines just don't get skewed enough. This is kind of cool. Quite like that. Travel and rest analysis. Sure. But you can see the difference from doing this on Opus 4.1 is like all of these things are actually somewhat useful. For example, this on its own is not going to be usable because they don't know what the data forms or everything we have is. The fact that it's trying to code that already is a little bit misleading, but it's actually not too bad. Stuff like this is kind of just pointless. But this is a really good starting point, especially the first half of this. Everything with Kelly criterion and all that is not really relevant. I wouldn't recommend using Kelly, although it's a mathematical correct way to do things. I prefer keeping things a little bit more simple in our models and just going off flat and semi-flat staking, where it's still based on confidence levels, but it's not based on us having to create the exact probability if we're off by a little bit getting killed on Kelly or even like half or quarter Kelly staking. You can see something like this. You can then put into a new chat and just say, based on this, can we create a first next step of just collecting the data don't worry about anything else and then we can even do that here so we can say something like okay great <laughs> do 
just the actual data collection. So then we'll see what this comes back with and just go from there. But this is basically all I wanted to show you is that you can get a really good head start and you don't even need to know a massive amount about the sports themselves because getting the data in a very comprehensive, usable way is probably the most difficult part. Okay, so again, looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, so like again, pretty easy and a free API, nice. Whenever you can get like further breakdowns, like by conference is gonna really help as well, especially for something like this. Okay, stats, rank, cool, rank one, star, decent. So this is football. So whenever you have something like this, it really helps. You can see this is building out the next steps for us now and how to do everything. If you're just proactive, you don't really need to know how to do anything anymore. You just need to be proactive enough to go through the steps. When you get stuck, which inevitably you will, especially early on, just go back to the different chat and ask where certain things are. So just like utilize screenshots, utilize like copy and pasting massive amounts of data and just go from there. Yeah. So like, have a crack with like a different sport, something a little bit easier than, you know, college basketball is probably a good starting point and see where you end up. Stuff like this is actually borderline incorrect in terms of trying to get the odds themselves. You can do it semi-manually if you want, or you can have a VA. You want to get the definite correct odds because if you're using like soft books that lines wouldn't exist, that can be a little bit misleading. If you use bet labs or you bet stamp to collect the actual pinnacle closing line or chris closing line or whatever you want to use you can do it against that although it will take you know quite a lot of time wouldn't recommend doing it manually just having that data is going to be worth a lot more and then baking all of this stuff in after will guarantee you'll have a decent starting point you can see here we've got some really good stuff I'm not going to do this because we have way too much volume coming up with all the season starting in basically now, early September. But hopefully this is pretty useful and you can see the power of upgrading a little bit. You only have to run this once. So paying a little bit more is probably worthwhile. Your individual points that you need to run through, you can do in other less powerful models. That would be my main takeaway for this. Okay, cheers.